Luke 11, verse 5 to 10. I read from the NIV. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight. He goes to him at midnight. And says, Friend, lend me, please follow. Lend me, borrow me, three loaves of bread. Verse 6. Because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and have nothing to set before him. He said, borrow me, lend me, because a friend of mine has come. I have nothing to offer to him. Emphasis. I have nothing to offer. Are we there? Verse 8. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is a friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he would get up and give him as much, as much as he needs. Verse 9. So I said to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, who sees, he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. Verse 11. Which of you, fathers, if your son asks for fish, for a fish, you will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give this to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hallelujah. Today I'm teaching on the parable of the friend at midnight and the parable of persistence. The parable of the friend at midnight and the parable of persistence. Hallelujah. Friends, good afternoon to everybody. We begin to study the parable of the kingdom of God. And I'd like you to understand that each parable addresses our lives. If you can sit down and examine the parables you'll be studying, you are involved in one or two, or, or if not all of the parables. It involves or it addresses a part or a portion of your life which was not considered. But the Lord is saying, if you can look into these things, it will be better for you. The parable of the friend at Mila. Friends, before we move further, we have to look at the subject uh, persistence. What is persistence? Because it was persistence, it was audacity that made the friend who was already asleep woke up and gave whatever the friend requested. Persistence. So persistence simply means what? It means the fact of continuing in an opinion on a course of action. The fact of continuing in an opinion or a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. They are, I want to be that kind of man, but there's an opposition. Persistent will tell me, don't give up. Keep pressing. You will surely get it. Persistent. I want to enter the promised land. I know I'm told to enter the promised land by now. I'm on my way to the promised land because of their giants. Yeah. When you press forward, the giants will leave. Persistence. Hallelujah. So, in, in spite of difficulty or challenge or opposition, you, re you refuse to give up, but you continue to press forward. Persistence. It also means the act of enduring continually. You endure continually. And finally, it also is the quality of tenacity, audacity needed to get a breakthrough. If you are not persistent, you will not get the breakthrough. How it together? So if you look at the parable of the friend at midnight, what we just heard from, uh, it says uh, that there was a man who has a friend. And uh, the Bible says that uh, his, his friend, a friend of his, came or stopped by his place. And he realized that he had nothing to offer. He realized that he had nothing to offer. Friends, 
There are some people when they look at you, they know you have what it takes to leave them. But when they come to you like the fig tree, when they find nothing, they pressure your life. Are we together? I said, are we together? You see, uh, you see, men will address you the way you dress. Likewise, there's a way men see you. So they come to you based on how they see you. Are we together? I said, are we together? You see, a man will not go to a fig tree to harvest apple. He goes to an apple tree to, uh, to harvest apple. Because apple tree, he expects apple tree to reproduce the apple fruit. So people will come to you. Have you not heard? Somebody came to you with a challenge. And you said, brother, sister, I cannot handle this one. He said, ah, I thought if I come to you, this will be handled. Why? They saw you in that category that you are able to do something. You are able. You are at that level. That's standard. And the Bible said, when, he, when his friend came to him, he had nothing to offer. Check your life very well. He had nothing to offer. What did he do? He now, he now realized that there is a friend who has what he had, what he needs in his possession. And the Bible says, he now went to that friend at midnight. He said, please borrow me, let me three loaves of bread. My friend just came, I want to feed him. And the guy in possession of the thing said, I'm already in bed. Don't disturb me, the doors are already shut. The strong man. I would do that. I said, I would do that. So you go to him at midnight. So he went to him at midnight and said, Give me three loaves of bread. Which means that in, in order to be persistent and have a, a, and have a resolve, listen to that, you must invoke the midnight hour. He went at midnight because that was a time to take it back by force. And I think he went in the evening, he couldn't have gotten it. The Lord said, He went at midnight, and a strong man said, I, I'm already in bed. Don't disturb me. The door has been shut. I don't know. Who told her the door has been shut against you? I don't know. Who has told you it is over? Brothers and sisters, if you can write your book and pray at midnight, the door that seems to be closed will be opened for you. I saw it will be opened for you. Will be opened for you. In the name of Jesus. He said, Don't disturb me, I'm already in bed. Yeah, he has a friend went to him. Why? Because remember, he had not in this, he was in luck. But he had to deploy prayers at midnight to take what belongs to him by force. Which, which suggests to me that the Lord of prayer may have been. He had it, yeah, he had it, but it was taken from him spiritually. And now he is found with nothing. There are people who have so, they had something in the system, but it was taken from them spiritually. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was speaking to one mechanic this morning. He sent the number to he sent the number of one lady to me. Sorry, he gave my number to one lady that I should pray for her. And the lady got to me, my name is AYZ. How can I help you? Pastor, I'm very sick, pray for me. So this morning when I met with the I was like, it's not just about prayers. It's about relationship. It's not, it, it's not just about prayer. Don't say, Pastor, pray for me. Who are you praying for? Who are you praying for and why? It's about relationship with the one who's supposed to answer the prayers. For the prayer to be effective. Also, it's about the person who's going to pray. Also, it's about the person you are going to pray for. Everything matters. Because if the person you are going to pray for has no relationship with Christ, you pray your wasting matter. Are we together? I said, we together? I said, right now, I'm talking to you right now. Everything on her has been taken away from her spiritual. I'm talking to you right now. I said, look, she's married. In the water, the husband has taken everything to stand from her. He said, Pastor, in fact, in fact, I'm talking right now, the lady is finished. I said, Don't need to tell me. He said, She had to study, but it was sweeter spiritual. So, how do you take it back? At midnight. At what? At what? At what? So, the friend came and he realized that he had nothing to offer. Before the friend came, he didn't realize he had anything. But when the friend came, he noticed that he, he, he didn't have the loaf of bread. When you are alone, you might think you have, but let one person add to you. You understand the word. Are we getting something here? 
So he discovered that he lacked something. So he now went at midnight to the man. Give me the love of prayer. The lady in there was asking in the spirit of it. He was asking what belongs to him. Give it to me. Give it to me. Uh, give it to me. Uh, give it to me. And the Bible says, even though they were friends, because of the audacity, uh, the tenacity, what happened? The, one, the strong man said, I am already in bed. He said, the door had been shut. I have taken your bread long time ago and I kept it in the bank. The, the bank is short. Am I saying something important now? I took the money already long time ago. I put it in my spiritual bank. I locked the door. The door has been shut. What do you want money? I've already locked the money. I took the marriage and locked it already. What do you want? The marriage and locked already. The door has been shut. But because of tenacity, because of faith, ladies and gentlemen, you must, you, you must have the audacity of faith to take it back by force and be that hour. He was in that. But because he went at midnight to the world, to the night. He was released. May you please, please, please hear me. May you be awake at midnight to pray. Amen. I said, I will, I will to pray. Amen. Some of you are sleeping. I will to pray. Amen. You can see where you are. I will to pray. Amen. I said, I will to pray. Amen. Let the fire, let the Holy Ghost wake up at midnight to pray. Amen. The mighty name of Jesus. Friends, friends, you cannot be better than your midnight prayer. Your life can never move forward. More than your midnight prayer. What do I mean? If there's no midnight prayer to rearrange, to recover, to take it back, if there's no midnight prayer, change it very well, your life will remain the same. Yeah, in yeah, out. It's at the midnight that you take it back before. Now, the story reverses what we call. He was in line. The midnight was deployed. He went and demanded, which means he asked, he prayed, and collected his own. And now came, let's say, when you stand at midnight and pray, you collect abundance. That was stolen from you. You collect it back, you take it back by force. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Three days ago, uh, three days ago, I woke up in the morning. I saw one of our brothers here it was shown to me like a revelation. It was shown to me how he was very sad. He looked very sad. And uh, when I woke up, I have never seen him sad like that. That's the first time I saw him. And I began to pray. I began to pray. I began to pray. I saw him when I finished praying. Along the day, I'll get to him, but I forgot. So at night, when we had a meeting, when we finished, I began to speak to him. He spoke to me that time. Look at what happened in the morning. That early in the morning, I was sent an email that ABC was rejected. So when I got that email, I was very bitter. I was very sad. I was, in fact, this, I'm talking about in the fiscal realm now. That was asking God why. Then I began to pray, I began to pray, I began to pray. That's the other few minutes, I go and go and email again from the same people that say it's not possible. Now they say it is possible. Are you getting what I'm saying? I didn't say the next day. Why? Somebody must rise to pray. I said, must rise to pray. Must rise to pray. So it marks, you see, now the midnight, it marks the end of a day and begins another day. In Exodus chapter number 12, verse 31 to 51, we see that the Israelites exited Egypt at midnight. At night, Pharaoh told Moses and Aaron, take them and go. And they decided to sojourn out at midnight, which, if you look at it very well, uh, the, the, the Passover feast was at midnight. It was a typology of crossing over. So we can see from the text we read in Luke chapter 11 that without this man deployed the midnight hour, he couldn't have taken back the loaf of bread. Which means that there are so many things in store, so many things that have been taken from people, but how do you get it back? Please pray at midnight. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are sleeping, you can stand up to your feet. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Alright, let's continue. So uh, we said the parable of the friend at midnight. So it suggests to me that uh, let's open to Psalm 91. Let me show something before we continue. Psalm 91 verse 5. Before we continue this. Psalm 91 verse 5. Are we there? Psalm 91 verse 5. Psalm 91 verse number 5. Hallelujah. When my brother was praying, was using Psalm 91, 91, 91, 91, 91. I was like, ah. <laughs> he started with verse 1. I said, ah. 
Where is this man going to? <laughs> That's how the Holy Ghost confirmed things. Alright, verse number four. Let me go to verse 5. He said, You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, which he used to do the prayers. He used to use the scripture to pray. It's written here in my book. Are we together? So, I'm simply looking at the midnight is a time where terror arose, arises to do what? To steal from people. Uh, go down to verse number 6. He said, Now the person that that stores in darkness, not the plague that destroyed at midday. So, midday and midnight are brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So, midnight is the hour to unlock the blessings, and it's the hour to bind the strong man. So at midnight, if you look at the Bible said he went to his friend and asked for what? For the basic necessity of life, which is what? Food. Bread. And the Bible says uh, he was refused, but he never took no for an answer. He was denied. He never took no for an answer. And ladies and gentlemen, hear me. No money means no food, which means that even the man's finances was changed. If food was in lack, Miss money was absent. If the man had no food, bread, and bread is the commonest commodity to offer to a person. So if there was no bread, means don't tell me the man had money. So which means that his money was treated by the strong man. Which means that his money is somewhere kept, kept in the bank, a spiritual bank. Which means that his destiny, his star career, which means that not just food, everything of his was captured by a strong man. So it gives you a picture, an idea that if you examine your life, the way things are moving or they are not moving, please rise up at midnight and handle these things. Are we together? Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So he went and placed a demand to the strong man responsible. He identified him and went to him with audacity. He didn't go to every person, he went to a particular person. Because a particular person will keep a particular thing. He knew that this person has bread in his possession. So if I go to him and I need bread, so he went to the one keeping bread. If he needed money, he could have gone to the one keeping the money. So he had to find a strong man. At midnight, he went to the man and demanded first a demand. So there's a demand. Before you take by your possession, you must identify the strong man to be your possession. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So the strong man said, I am already in bed. He replied, don't bother me. The door is already locked. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Shall we open? The door is already locked. Who replied? Ephesians 6 verse 10. Don't bother me. The door is already locked. I've already taken everything and locked it. What does the Bible tell us? Verse 10 to 10. He said, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's ships or the devices of the enemy. From verse, verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces. And of evil in heavenly realms. So the one that refused is not a human being, it was a power. The one that said the door is shut was a force, was a strong man. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Ma Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. No. Matthew 4, Matthew 12, verse number 20. Faultless. Matthew. Matthew chapter number 12. Verse 24. Are we there? Are we there? Verse 24. Verse 24. Are we on there? Okay, let's go to verse 29. Let me just go straight to the point. 29. Oh, again. Say, oh, again. How can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions? You see, the man's possession, the, the basic was kept. 
by someone. Which means that the man's possessions were engaged. Please don't miss Sunday service. It's deliver service. Some of us are here. Some of us are sleeping in church. Some of us are here. Hallelujah. You want to take my position? <laughs> and you are sleeping in church. <laughs> uh, these guys are not joking. Power is not joking. There are people who have taken an oath that you know so sick. Are you asking me? <laughs> yeah. In Acts chapter number 28, the Bible says, Some people sat down, 40 men again. They said, We shall not eat nor drink until Paul dies. Not one man, 40 men. We are taking an oath not to eat nor drink until Paul dies. I think they are joking. <laughs> Well, it depends on you how you see your destiny. Depends on you where you are going to. Depends on you where you see your promised life. It all depends on you. And the choice again is yours. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says, How can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions? You see, bread, which was the commonest commodity of this man, was not in his people, was in the hand of a strong man. So how could we go and collect the bread? Don't tell me that if his bread was in a strong man's possession, what more of his certificates? What more of his marriage? What more of his money? If common bread was withheld, was gained by strong man, what more of money, certificate, job opportunities, open up, what more of this was we talking about? Are we together? I saw it together. Yes, sir. He says, uh, uh, you must first of all tie up the strong man, then you can rob his house. You must first of all bind him before you can take back what belongs to him. For the violent was taken by four. At midnight, you must identify what is lacking in your life and rise up and take it by four. Pastor will not take it for you. Let me know. You have to take it for yourself. If you like your life at this status, God bless you. If you don't like what is happening in your life, rise up. Rise up and? No, rise up and? At midnight. Sorry to say, at midnight is when uh, most of us are chatting on WhatsApp. We are chatting with friends on WhatsApp. Not how far? On Facebook. That's why we are chatting. You are the enemy. They are gathered. They shall surely gather. Isaiah 54, verse 16. 15, 16, 17. They shall surely gather. When? At midnight hour. From 12 to 3. They have gathered in their covenant to decide the next person they will kill. And there you are. You are there chatting on what's up. Meanwhile, they are there planning to eliminate you. You are here chatting. Go back up. They are there planning how they can eliminate you. How they can send paralysis to a human being. That human being is there chatting on Facebook. No prayer. Then when they say let's pray at midnight, people will come to start sleeping. When there's no prayer at midnight, they are they are they are alert and awake to you watch movies. There are people who, who come back from work at about eight o'clock. They stay away to watch football, do football matches till four a.m. Are we together? They don't play. No one. It's more interesting. It's fun. They rather not pray at midnight to take away your destiny. Pastor, I feel tired. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. The aeroplane cannot fly above the drag force. It is the drag force that propels the aircraft to the level which the force wants it to be. So without the drag force at a high level, the aircraft cannot be in the ground. So the quality of the prayers that we pray will show you where you should be or where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Please remember here, here we're not getting money from anybody. So we just have to say the truth. Glory be to God. So first of all, he must first of all bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? Official not the strong man. You cannot bind the strong man in the afternoon. If you discuss with fishermen, they will tell you that the best time to catch the biggest fish is at night, midnight. 
at night. Discuss with fish and you can have them, friends. Talk to them. They go fishing there another day. In the day they sleep. Because they said the big fish, they come outside at night. So when they go and throw the net, they gather much at night. They know. Anybody that goes fishing up during the day is just for fun. Someone said, Hallelujah. Yeah, it's just for fun. All right, shall we continue? So you must identify the strong man and go to him with audacity to take back your possession. So in, Ma- in Matthew chapter number 204, we just read, he said you must first identify the strong man and bind him. Open to Psalms 27, verse 9. And the strong man will not give up easily. Let's look at an example. Psalms 27, verse 9. Let's see resistance from the strong man. The strong man will resist. 27 verse 9. Are we okay? Verse 9 says, Verse 9. 27. Psalm 27 verse 9. Yes. Do not hide your face from me. Do not take your servants away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. Oh my Savior. Verse number 10. Says, Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will save me. Hallelujah. So if you look at this very well, we see here that you must identify yourself with the person called the Lord. Jesus. For it will take by your possession from the hands of the strong man. Now remember, we are looking at the parable of the friend at midnight. There was the identification with Christ. Then he empowers you to recover what belongs to you. He will tell you at what time to step out. Shall we open to Luke chapter number 18, verse 1? Luke 18. Let's tie this with the parable of the persistent widow. Luke 18, verse 1. One, it's a man of always to pray, okay? But 18 verse 1. All right, verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable uh, to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Verse 2. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming. He kept, she kept coming, persistent. She kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Verse 4. For some time, for some time, he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or I care about men, Yet, because this woman keeps bothering me, tenacity, persistence, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Verse 8. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly, however, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith on the end. Faith on the end. Now, this parable talks about the, the, the widow, the persistent widow. She kept going to the judge and the judge kept refusing. And because the woman was persistent, the man said, if I don't give her justice today, she will me out. So, they will turn, they will turn and change and cover the woman. Why? Because she was persistent. Now remember, she was a widow. So no man could fight for her. She was a widow. No man could fight for her. No husband. But Jesus is saying that if you can depend on me and be persistent and mean it, whatever belongs to you, I will listen back to you. But you must identify the strong man. Brothers and sisters, justice cannot be given to you without praise and mean James chapter 1, 
verse 12. James 1 verse 12. Are we okay? Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who perseveres on that trial. Because when he is, when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Perseverance on the trials, on the challenges. Don't give up, don't take no for an answer. Brother, your nose should be promised. Hallelujah. So persistent means don't give up. Keep up the faith. But before you take back your own portion, brothers, you must have the right expectation. When a man went to his friend at midnight to demand for the trigger for bread, he was expecting to have a loaf of bread. That's why when the friend said, no, I'm already in bed, the man kept insisting that he was giving that bread. Persistent. Persistent. So he went with, a, with the right expectation to receive what belongs to him. And also, he had to pray. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Don't give up. And let's say, man, to take by your portion, you must understand that no is not an answer. Rather, no should propel you to pray more. No should not be an answer. No should not be your foundation. And when, you, when something belongs to you, and you pray at midnight, the first and second, third, fourth time, you might even pray for 30 days and 30 nights, no answer. Don't give up. Keep pressing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was lying down one day. I was not sleeping. I was lying down. And I, and I was being taught something about prayers. I was not praying. I was just lying down. I was not sleeping. I was shown an image of a pen. Please follow my voice on. I was shown an image of a pen. And the pen, I think they, 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 they plucked the pen into the ground. That's what I was shown. And the question was asked to me, can this pen fall? I said, yes, it's possible. What are the, what are the what is the greatest possibility? You see, many are trying to push the pen from this from the top. That's a that's a error. Many are trying to solve the problem superficially. Error. Many are trying to find a strong man superficially. Error. Many are trying to solve their problems from the physical point of view. Error. He said, look at it again. I said, it's possible for it to fall. What do you think? Where can I attack this thing to fall? He said, look at the base. He said, the moment you hit the base, the top will fall. The moment you hit the strong man, your, uh, your money will be released. The moment you hit the strong man, the strong man is the base. This pen will fall. But when you try to push the top, meanwhile you are going to be touch a strong man, he will resist. Are we together? So he says, uproot the foundation and the pen will automatically fall on its own. I will never stand again. Which means that when you defeat a strong man, you take out your own position. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So understand that justice is given from the Lord. Only when you pray. So what am I trying to say this afternoon? The parable of the friend at midnight speaks about your life and life. Examine your life very well. Where is it? Where are you lacking? Which area is lacking? Rise up at midnight and press the demand. For without you pressing the demand at midnight, that thing will remain the same. Are we together? Are we together? Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Be thou exalted, be thou magnified. Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen.